and welcome back to Robbie's Arcade. Today we want to talk about Sonic the Hedgehog 1. Now, Sonic the Hedgehog 1 was released originally when it premiered on all those great Sega systems at the time, 1991 and 2. The big three systems they had were the Sega Mega Drive, the Sega Master System and the handheld system, the Sega Game Gear. Now, all three of these received their own versions of Sonic the Hedgehog, with everyone pretty much largely agreeing that the Game Gear and the Master System version were identical. Gotta say, those people were wrong and we will be facing off each individual version of Sonic the Hedgehog against each other to find the most definitive version let's face it it's probably the Mega Drive but there's lots of reasons why the Mega Drive one is very very good but these two at the bottom still do have a lot of things going for them that the Mega Drive one didn't have and that's largely because it was released later but today we want to talk about endings so the Hedgehog one has kind of a, a typical genre um, defined ending of bad guy loses good guys are freed but the way all three systems went for it differed slightly, and most of that is due to hardware uh, capabilities. So without further ado, let's look at the Game Gear version there on the bottom left. Now, uh, the Sky Base, there's several levels that aren't even in the Mega Drive version. They had to come up with brand new levels in a number of places. Um, now, in this version, we've got this weird propeller thing going on here that would carry you through to the later levels. There's even moves, and the sprites you can see, all three on screen, are very very different and the music as well very different there isn't a score on screen um, you've got your lives there but it seems to take up a lot more space and the music obviously because it's an 8-bit system the music is less impressive so this was the build-up towards that boss level but of course you were still getting fired at there's no rings there's none of the freedom and ease of you know you know second chances that the Mega Drive version gave you. But you still had to make these jumps onto these silly little mobile platforms on the Game Gear version. And remember, the Game Gear version on that handheld system wasn't the best. It consumed battery life uh, to insane quantities. And there was no memory card system. There was, I believe there might have been a level select cheat, but bear, remember, that's not a cheat. That's not a facility that's been included in the game. So there you go. Oh, that is the sound of happiness. That is one of the six, count it in this game, six uh, Chaos Emeralds that this game arrived with. Have you noticed, still no rings, still very much one hit kills. So here we are inside the sky base. And you finish the, that part of the level. So this is the preamble on the way to the boss. So you go through there, still remember none of that, oh I've been hit, I've dropped all my rings Lark. But there you go, six Chaos Emeralds we are going to be looking at the proper ending there. So now we get to the very top of the sky base, that floating, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Blimp, if you will, what's the word? Zeppelin, that'll do a much better job. You roll down there, remember, still no rings, still no fallback, and here we have the last boss. So the designers obviously did a job here, wondering how well people are going to play in this circumstance, because of the handheld nature, because you've already put in four to five hits within the first 30 seconds. So it's not the hardest boss, but once all of the weird stuff on screen starts appearing, it's not the easiest. Let's have a look here, shall we? And there you go, that's the last boss defeated. And you chase him as quickly as you can, but the lucky bugger gets inside a teleporter. Why Sonic hasn't jumped in there and knocked the bugger out, I don't know. But it's not over yet. Robotnik is trying to get inside his trademark floating spaceship thing to get away. Anyone who doesn't remember that ship clearly doesn't remember the swinging boulder. So he's getting away at quite a leisurely pace and boom. Gets hit. Still don't know what happens. Who knows? Does he live? Does he die? He lives. Sonic pulling a disastrously terrible face. Realises he's got all six. Remember that. Six Chaos Emeralds. Oh, they, they got so confused there. And those six Chaos Emeralds freed the island of all the pollution. And there you go, that's the ending. It's a nice feel-good ending. Nice and straightforward. You get all your points. It's, you know, pretty easy. Pretty easy going. To let me know you've got all of those points. And again, going back to it, this was a lot to do with the limitations of the system. The Master System was an 8-bit system, as was the Game Gear. But due to power consumption, RAM being another uh, chief problem there, the Game Gear still couldn't quite meet 
where the master system lived and several different um, toning down and you know changing of the graphic structure had to be performed in order to have the game maintain not only the speed threshold but most of the sprites on screen because there were lots of disparity and differences again do check out my video that's coming soon comparing all three of these versions of what was the main differences today we're just focusing on those endings but just looking at the game itself what you got at the end of the Game Gear version was this weird musical thing here was basically just Sonic sitting there on a microphone giving it all the fingers giving it all the talk and that's it that's just letting you know it's the Game Gear version and then just the credits that's really a lot and this continues for about two minutes and that's your lot so I think that's pretty much explained the Game Gear version well enough wouldn't you agree let's try out the master system the system the version that everyone thinks is exactly the same and don't worry at the end of the video we will have all three systems running side by side now the first thing to bear in mind is the floors changed in fact the entire scenery has changed the primary weapons have changed the attack methods have changed even the character sprites have changed people always bang on about these two being identical and they're really not also, if you noticed, every time you hit the boss's shield, unlike the previous game, where the whole thing lights up in a crazy electrified bubble, this time, all it, the glass does is flicker a tiny bit. I would go as far to say this is significantly harder, because those hits have to be done in that very narrow window there. And again, remember, no rings, one hit, kills. But it's still very impressive indeed that this, this is being played to this speed. Now... We talk about resolution a lot these days with computers and TVs and stuff. And it is worth bearing in mind that, of course, the Game Gear, because it had a smaller resolution, it needed fewer uh, bits and sprites on screen, or needing bits for process um, to, to make the informed construction, 0, 1, and all that lark. But um, because of the larger scale size of the resolution of the Master System, it led to the graphics needing a little bit more oomph, and therefore the Game Gear just couldn't cut it. One of the many reasons for the cutbacks, not only in this ending and the graphics in general, but also throughout the game. And once again, check out the other video to highlight all of the differences from the small to the big. But there you go, he's got the teleportation method. So spoiler alert, I think you know what's coming. But now, of course, graphics are a little bit bigger here. Obviously, the resolution, once again. Robotnik still thinking, yep, I'm going to get away. Boom. Still gets dicked by Sonic the Hedgehog there. Still no crashing sound? Who knows? Now Sonic pulls a slightly less gormless face and pulls out the six Chaos Emeralds once again. They float up there, although you can only see the one. And the six Chaos Emeralds work together and clean the island. And there you go. The, the island, I'll be honest, I have no idea what the island in Sonic the Hedgehog is. If you do know, pop it in the comments. Try to not Google, actually. Try to see if you can work out the name of the island in Sonic the Hedgehog without Googling it. If you Google it, you're your own boss. You're the one, that, you know, you're, you know whether you did right or wrong. But, as you can see, we've already started seeing stark similarities between the Game Gear version and the Mega Drive version. That said... It should be mentioned, the graphics were superior on the Master System, the sound was superior on the Master System, definitely the animation was better, and overall, the boss was more challenging. It was a better boss, even if the ending was near enough identical. It would have been good if I kept that score on the screen as well. But, once again, there you go, exactly the same. Slightly improved, more stars on the screen, bigger surface area as well, but Master System version. Isn't that nice? They've even gone to the trouble of including the name of the system for me there for this video. Once again, this proceeds exactly the same now as the Game Gear, just slightly better. More animations as well. The character moves a little bit more, but ultimately, that's your lot. I don't really think it's good that Sonic's mouse giving it all of that and we're not hearing him say anything, but again, 8-bit system. So that, of course, leaves the winner of them all, Let's face it, everyone knows the Mega Drive version was by far and large the most superior of all of the Sonic games. But, let's have a look. It might be a bit too loud, let's bring that down a little bit. And here we are with the ending of Sonic the Hedgehog 1 for the Mega Drive. Now this boss, I would say is actually easier than the Master System. I've played all three of these systems in my life. And I would go as far as to say this version is easier. It's relatively straightforward to work out. 
where Robotnik is going to be coming from and if you do miss it dodging these is actually not too tough so you move out of the way and if you're unlucky like that well you're always going to have more chance but this really is the entire boss the boss what you're watching there there's no other advanced techniques to get utilized it really is dodge these balls find the gap if possible and know that if you're in the gap move out the way afterwards that really is it i'm not going to say this is as easy as the game gear version but i'll be honest it's bloody on par isn't it but once again better music uh, look at this thing at the top there with the score the time the rings far more advanced once again mega drive version 16-bit far more horsepower to deal with but with a better cut up color palette and better music this is just a better boss overall um, now it does go on a little bit it should be said because unlike the other bosses you don't really oh, I think that's happened to everyone that's ever played this game that strange jump that's not a jump now a lot of people would play this and they'd start to get frustrated around this point because they'd be thinking why on earth am I still not getting him and then you think right well I've got him now explosions smoke the works there he is this time We've eliminated the teleporter. The teleporter's gone. Sonic's sitting there looking pretty pissed off. But unlike the other games, we don't get to develop or give him one last smack for good measure. So there we go. There's our Chaos Emeralds. And there we go. The Chaos Emeralds have solved everything and made it all great. Did anyone notice how many Chaos Emeralds there were? Uh, I hope you saw that. Also, I don't really like that image. I didn't know Sonic had five fingers. Strange. And then what you see, instead of the weird musical cameo karaoke lot that you get on the other two systems, what you end up with is Sonic, a little preview of every level you've gone through, each time with better music. And it just goes through every single level, one by one, from the Marble Zone, one of the largely overlooked levels, I would say, of the Sonic franchise, and unfortunately also that poxy underwater level as well at one point. But these credits are far more engaging, I think. And again, I would go as far as to say, by this point in time with computer games, endings were important. People wanted a payoff. And this game knew. This, I mean, this the Mega Drive was meant to be the arcade faithful machine. Oh, underwater levels. Oh, I could do a whole video on underwater levels, and I probably will. Some of the worst underwater levels in gaming. I don't, I've never met anyone who's ever loved underwater levels. And I've got to say, Echo the Dolphin can do one. But um, here we are. I believe it was this the chemical level or was that um, Sonic the Hedgehog 2? Who knows? But this is a far more engaging ending. Because the music's quite upbeat, the tempo of it. The game really played to its strength, Sonic the Hedgehog 1, I've got to say. But... I like this idea of seeing all of these levels individually as you go through them, just to know what you've played through to get there. Here we go. And the music as well, which I quite like. Now the game really did know what it was doing, and it's just a shame so many of these features and functionality and playable factors never made it onto that Master System and Game Gear version. But of course, this level, everyone knows that this level of Sonic the Hedgehog, it is the damn thing, it is the Green Hill Zone, it's been recreated more times than I can remember. but. There you go. That was Sonic the Hedgehog 1's ending for the Sega Mega Drive with a pissed off Robotnik. Well, there you have it. That is the ending to Sonic the Hedgehog 1 for the Sega Mega Drive, the Sega Master System, and of course the Sega Game Gear. Very different in their own way, and don't let anyone tell you that it's just the same game. Look at them side by side there. They are vastly, vastly different, both in resolution and the kind of battle you are facing there at the end. And as, as you have already seen, the endings do play out differently. Look how quick the Game Gear one ended. But nevertheless, this has been Robbie's Arcade. I hope you've enjoyed it. I look forward to seeing you next time. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. And do check out my other videos on some great arcade and home gameplay classics. Thank you very much. See you next time.